All right, I'm just going to show you guys how to generate high resolution images in Stable Diffusion, or the way I do it at least. So this image, believe it or not, is straight out of text to image. There's no impaling, there's no upscaling, there's nothing. It was done in 2048 by 768. I did use a few extensions, so let's just have a closer look at this image. This image can also be upscaled, which I have done. I'm just going to layers here. So you can see the details are pretty good for text to image, but with an upscale, see the detail we can kind of get, and we can go even further. You can even start to see the lines on the lips and the teeth, the iris. The details this can generate is quite incredible. Okay, before we get started, there's a few extensions you're going to need. One is Control Net, and two is Latent Couple. They're the two extensions we're using. You also need the Open Pose Editor, so we can set the pose directly within Web UI. And when you have Control Net, don't forget you also need the Open Pose model for it to work. Now that means sort of means you'll probably need to install Unprompted before you install Control Net. This is the Open Pose Editor. So the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to set the resolution to what we're going to actually use in text image. In this case, it is actually 2048 by 768. Uh, at that point, you'll click Add to add the model. And then you can size it, place it wherever you like. So you can see I've gone ahead and pl placed one already, but I'll just show you this quickly. You also can select a few if you wanted to move it around a bit. Something like that. So for open pose, make sure it's enabled. Pre-process set to none because we're using the open pose. Model, control, open pose. Uh, make sure that's installed too because you'll need that. And now we're going to set the weights down a bit. I've put 0.7 for the weight and 0.76 for the guidance strength. That's just so the model has some flexibility to move the pose around just a little bit. You know, so it's not completely rigid because you know we may not make a great pose ourselves. So we'd like to give it a bit of flexibility. Uh, don't worry about the canvas width or size, it's just completely irrelevant. Okay, so take note of where the open pose is within the canvas. You've set this up so you know. The next thing we need to do is enable the latent couple and define what, where it's going to be. So in this example, I've got four divisions. The first is for the full image, which is there. The second, whoop, is it goes Y to X, so that's that's it's full Y resolution and half the X. And the second we've got half and half, and the fourth we've got the full again. I had to add this just to add some more controls, so I was having some issues. So the patient's positions uh, starts at zero for zero, the top left corner for the full resolution for that one. And that starts from Y zero and 0.7 across the X resolution. So this starts, gives it about there, which kind of lines up roughly where the pose is going to be. And the next two both start from the top left corner, so that's in there, and that's for the full resolution. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is set the prompts and the sub-prompts. So the first prompt, that's going to be the very first latent couple we set up, which is this one here. It's only got a weight of 0 0.2, so it's not doesn't influence too much. So we've just got some standard tags, masterpiece, realistic, photorealistic, and all the rest. Now, the second line, we use and. This will set our next sub-prompt. So this region is this one here, which is where we're setting the model. So we're describing the model we're using here. That's all that. I had to add a little bit more emphasis on in this for this example. And be careful of this tag. Sometimes it can lead to not safe for work images, but maybe necessary for some models. So they they can you know often give you an exaggerated bus, which sometimes you may not want. Well, that's if you want to generate safe for work images anyway. And we'll also define the spaceship interior and outer space in here. And the next prompt was for the top left corner as we wanted to put a window over here, which we've gotten. So we've got spaceship interior again, window, outer space, and the rest. And the next one, we just define it as just spaceship interior with a weight of 0.8 across the entire image, just to give it a bit more consistency. Uh, same thing with the 
native prompts. We've got our natives at the top and our natives in the sub prompts here. I want to hit generate, that'll run. Um, but just to show you the settings I've got, I'm using DPM++ 2SA Keras, sampling step is 30. And the width you can see I'm using 2048, that's 768 as described before. CFD is six, seed is on random, but to generate the same image as before again, we'll use the previous seed. And just make sure that's all good. Okay, I'm just gonna go hit generate and I'll let that run. So I'll just skip over this part just to speed up the video. So you can see we're coming along nicely here. I reinstalled my NVIDIA drives recently, so I may need to reinstall CUDA just to speed it up again. It does seem to be a bit slower than normal, but let's wait a second. So you can see this is the image we've generated here straight out of text image. It's quite nice and detailed already. Yeah, so that looks great, lots of detail, but we're not done yet. We're going to send this to image to image to just get a lot more detail once again. So send to image to image. Wait for that to load. So I'm just going to use the exact same settings here. So I'm going to change this to a carry 30 steps. It's probably not too important. See if it's six. In this case, the denoise, we're changing this down to 0.3 just to keep the image as much as possible. Same seed. Controller, if you had this enabled, disable controller because it will not work. It will mess it up. And disable everything else. You probably want to enable the latent couple the same as it was before. <clears throat> So I'm just going to go copy the settings over. Uh, that's going to mess up, isn't it? Okay. So I'll just copy that over. And I know that's that. And I know this was point zero, and I had it going all the way to the end of the steps. Yep, that looks right. Unprompted disabled. <clears throat> okay, so leave the resolution as is. Uh, we don't upscale with this, so this just defines the tile size. So if you find you run out of GPU memory, GPU memory when you're upscaling an already large resolution image from here, you can actually decrease this just to say 1024 by half of whatever this is, 384, something like that. Maybe no, that's wrong, but that would just De uh, increase the amount of tiles that the image is split up to, and it should pretty much work out the same. But I'm just going to go default, uh, same as the image size. Now, to upscale this, we use the SD upscale script. We do not upscale from extras, as all that does is just it upscales the script, upscales the image without re rendering it basically. So, the upscale we're going to use in this case is the MNKD superscale. I find that works quite well for faces and character details. I use Remacro quite a lot, but it's quite soft on capturing details, but it can preserve backgrounds, background images without making them too weird. Okay, so we're just going to run this. Actually, wait. So normally you might do a 2x scale, but I'm just going to show you what a 3x looks like. As I showed you in Photoshop before, it's quite a lot more detail than a 2x. So we're just going to hit generate. And we'll just skip over this part to speed up the video what it's running like in here. So it's split into 16 tiles. It's actually running quite a lot slower than it normally is, so I do need to reinstall CUDA and Xformers again. But it's still going to work regardless. All right, so that's done. So that took about six minutes. I've already gone ahead and opened the images up in Photoshop. So that's the finished image to image version. This is the original text to image version. So just to show the difference, I'm just going to go ahead and scale this to match the upscaled version. So you gotta go ahead and copy that. Copy. And paste that over. Now let's go and have a look. So this is the text image version. Let's go in one, oops, let's go in one more punch. This is the upscaled version. You see here just how much more detail there is there. Uh, the one downside of the NMKD upsampler, or at least one of them, is sometimes it messes up other background details, especially stars. Some of it, it just turns into lines and squiggles uh, versus the original. But if you use something like the Remacri sampler uh, upscaler, and say maybe at 0.25 instead, 
you can layer them like this. And we're just going to select the subject. Uh, and select the subject. Make that a mask. If you put that on top, you could use the Remacri sampler to put in the sky in the background. This also this guy on I mean, the stars. The stars obviously look a bit poor here because it's sort of the original 2048 resolution just upscaled without being re-rendered, but you can composite that from different upscalers this way. But we can put a blur on that as well if you wanted to. Just put a lens blur. Uh, maybe that's a bit much. Or maybe a little bit more. Uh, we'll just go that. It also kind of creates a depth of field effect, but so it's not too bad. So that's basically it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.